When Chen Hui Lin took his father's well-meaning advice 26 years ago to give up his small business and go back to farming, he was initially reluctant. So in January 1985, along with six friends and relatives, Chen Hui Lin signed a 20-year open-ended lease on a piece of wasteland near their village. After several years of investment and tender care, they cultivated an orchard of over 2,000 pear trees. They were filled with optimism for the future. But things did not develop quite as they expected. In 1990, as the region was accelerating its economic development, chemical giant Hebei Chengxin set up operations just outside Chen's village. According to local farmers, since 1994, the factory has been secretly dumping waste contaminated with highly toxic cyanide in a riverbed near their orchard. Within a few years, the trees stopped bearing fruit. They lost their leaves and eventually died. In 2001, the farmers caught the dumping on camera. Later, scientific tests by provincial authorities confirmed excessive levels of simple and complex cyanide. The factory offered a one-off compensation package, averaging about 900 US dollars each to cover the farmer's loss and to drill new wells. Not fully understanding the extent of the problem, the farmers accepted. <laughs> When the new wells also produced contaminated water, the villagers began to realize the true scale of the disaster. When the last deep well in the area also became contaminated, the villagers had to seek alternative ways to satisfy their water supply needs. This has been Qi Zhang Feng's daily routine for almost a decade. From dawn till dusk, delivering drinking water to the local households. an average of 60 US dollars a month for each family to buy this water. This service had been the villagers' sole water supply for nearly 10 years. 
Du Ray Guor said it wouldn't be long before these wells run dry. Compounding the water shortage problem, the villagers also noticed a change in the water quality. In the 1950s, the North China Plain had a healthy ecosystem. Fresh, sweet water was available from wells as little as one meter deep. Rivers and streams wound through the area. Swamps and wetlands were common playgrounds for children. But recent statistics show the current per capita water resources of the region is as low as 335 cubic meters per year. This is below the extreme water stress level of 500 cubic meters, as indicated by international water scarcity rankings. In this region, we have the deepest water sources, the streams, basically it's dry. It's not dry, it's dry, it's dry. So, it's called the well known for his book, China's Water Crisis, Ma Jun is currently in charge of developing an online database named the China Pollution Map, highlighting 30,000 violators of air and water regulations. He points out that pollution adds another dimension to the water shortage. 这个污染呢，导致的结果就是我们的有限的这些资源，有遭到了损害。它和它和缺水之间是一个非常恶性的互动，也就是说，因为缺水河里没水，所以排出去的污水都没有办法去稀释、去自净，所以污染就更重。那
，这才多高？那还没我高，我这桶里的，平常都得一米六七高。Yang Chung Lu and two of his childhood friends have also become victims of pollution from the factory. The contamination of groundwater has spread to more than 10 villages, affecting 30,000 residents. The Moon Festival comes every year to Li Village. These days, while not everyone has time to celebrate the occasion, there will always be a few who can take a moment to value the tradition of reunion. Concerned about the dangers of water pollution, Chun Lu's friend Yang Jing Liang moved out of the village to an urban area, but he still tries to return to the village to see his friends on this special day. This 自古以来，我都在这儿一本一本的挺好的一个地方。我说我的母寨，我得搬出来。这不是把我们给给毁了festival is traditionally also a celebration for a great harvest in Chinese culture. But for the villagers here, with little or nothing in their fields, it's now become a bitter reminder of more bountiful times. Offering to the moon goddess for better fortune may not resolve their problems. For an evening at least, it does give them an element of hope. fellow villagers don't believe in miracles. With their latest petitions to the factory being ignored, they decided to take the case to court with the help of legal aid. In addition, they've made repeated trips to provincial and central government offices to press their claims for compensation and practical help to restore their farmland. But despite the accumulated evidence of illegal dumping, they lost the court case, twice, nor have they received a reply to their petition from the government. Mm. 
Lawyer Liu Yangping works for the Center for Legal Assistance to Pollution Victims, an NGO which has previously been successful in suing polluters. Liu encouraged the farmers to be optimistic, but also cautioned them that the chemical company has been putting up a determined defense. The lawyer thinks these seven farmers may not realize it, but they're not just fighting for themselves. 这个诉讼要是打赢了以后会引起了一个污染治理 Chen earns less than a hundred US dollars a month. This nearly decade-long lawsuit has not only exhausted Chen physically, but also financially. A part of Chen's income comes from growing drought-tolerant vegetables such as Chinese yam. He says with proper management, the plants can still survive irrigation with polluted water. In early 2011, after their ordeal was exposed in the national media, the most visible evidence of pollution was removed and a temporary solution for water supply was introduced, but at the villagers' own expense. The source of the water comes from a 300-meter deep well in the lower stream, where the pollution hasn't reached yet. <laughs> Villagers do not trust the quality of this water source since no waste treatment plan has been announced. They suspect waste water is now being discharged into secret wells inside the factory, away from prying eyes. 
Experts say two decades of rampant pollution could be enough time for toxic chemicals to seep deep down into the soil and pollute natural aquifers. Shengtan 那么特别是流经城市的这些地下水，就是在城市这个范围的，可能有百分之九十都受到了污染，但是呢，这个更广大地区的这些地下水的情况，甚至对它的这个监测也是不够的，了解也是不够的。After extending the lease on the farmland, Chen and his friends were later shocked when the local government unilaterally cancelled the contract without any prior negotiation. Consequently, the farmers were informed that, since they were no longer tenants of the land, their struggle for compensation and restoration of their property was effectively over. The villagers believed this was an unlawful act and just one of many taken to block their repeated attempts to get compensation. About 50 kilometers away from the village, a grand party is underway in the regional capital of Shijiazhuang. With 11% economic growth, officials plan to build Hebei province into a new national industrial base to ease the environmental pressure on Beijing and Tianjin. Four major industrial parks are planned in the area around Chen's village and several factories are expected to be relocated here within three years. Officials are counting on the South to North Water Diversion Project to solve the current water crisis. In a few years, trillions of gallons of water will be diverted each year from the humid South to the thirsty North. But with completion of the water project still uncertain, and the immediate prospect of more factories and industrial estates, the rural community feel they have little to celebrate. At the Shijiazhuang railway station, Chen Huilin and his fellow villagers embark on yet another mission to petition the government in Beijing. But as word of Chen's trip spread, township officials are already en route to the capital to intercept them. If caught, the farmers will be sent straight back home. Using the crowds as cover, just getting through undetected will already be a minor victory. While China's economic miracle has benefited millions financially, it has come at a tremendous environmental cost. So the question remains for Chen, is it a price worth paying? <laughs>